Hey guys, it's me, Lisa, and it's Halloween today! Happy Halloween! Yoo-hoo! I'm not dressed up as a Halloween dude because, well, it would have taken too much time. I wanted to be dressed as a leaf, but then I woke up at nine, and waking up at nine ruins your day. So, <laughs> I have done a lot of stuff today, but putting on a lot of makeup wasn't in the schedule. But let's see what we can do about that. <laughs> Hello, turns out last year with Art Society, I did this whole dude with pumpkins made as most of the people that I knew. There's me, my boyfriend. It's like very symbolic. This is my boyfriend. You see that it has stuff on top and yeah everyone has something different going on like here there's vegetables and it's very particular very hard to spot but we have pumpkins on my head so this is already something makes me more halloweeny also talking about this wonderful board if you want to see how i created the whole process everything i will link the video down below it's on my other channel but now, without any further ado, we are going to review the spookiest, the most terrifying, the craziest horror Halloween book that you might ever read. It is not a joke. The book chilled me to the bone, especially the first part. It was very much chilling and I'm gonna explain everything in a second. But let's first say that yesterday I was planning on reviewing a book that will come out this year. It was judged by Stephen King as wonderful, incredible, and then turns out it comes out in November. And I was super disappointed. I discovered it yesterday night and I was like, oh my god, we need to do something because I don't have time to get another book, read it in a single day and then get a video up. So obviously I went on my trusty Audible and I was like, what's up? What do we have? And I got this beautiful book that is called Born of No Woman and I think it is very good it's a very good book and i say it's very much terrifying because when you think about horror you think it's gonna be really scary spooky it's gonna probably involve some vampires ghosts or some spooky creature and when you think about that then you wake up from this whole journey of horror and you're like oh yeah that was nothing it's great it doesn't exist but in this book, the difference was that you don't have any crazy creature, you don't have anything of that sort. What you have is a lot spookier. So now let's dive into the plot because it's a crazy one and I'm gonna explain to you why it was so scary to me. We are talking about this girl, she's called Rose and she gets sold by her father to a uh, smith and he doesn't believe to do her any harm. He believes that she will become this man's wife and she will have a cool life. He has a manor, so he will have property and she can give him ears and have a really cool life. What she discovers as soon as she goes to this manor is that one, she cannot say goodbye to any member of her family, including her father. So she is dragged away immediately and when she reaches the manor she discovers that she will have to serve her master and the master's mother because she will have to cook and clean and do all of the chores of the house. And she soon discovers that however good she might perform, it will never be enough because she will always be criticized at all times. And this is terrible in itself. I was already thinking, imagine if that is your life. At some point you get sent somewhere and it's a nightmare. 
but it doesn't end there obviously what happens is that she soon meets with this guy that seems all nice and good he's bringing her the food that she has to cook and with that guy he discovers her spying into the room of the master's wife and he's very angry at her at first and she gets discovered also by the master and the mother and they say that she will be punished but time goes by and she doesn't get punished until one day she makes the mistake of going on a horse one of the master's horses and she is guided there by this wonderful guy and they spend an amazing time and that evening she gets punished in the most horrific way you could imagine she's 14 so let's remember that and that man is so much older and he abuses her and this is Oh my god, it was so graphic, so disgusting. She described it because obviously it was the first time for her. She was in so much pain and he is a disgusting man. He's fat, his smell is filthy, uh, it's foul, terrible. So disgusting, 100%. And so everything of this uh, happens and it's already terrible. And soon after she tries to run away because she can't have any more of all that abuse and all that terrible thing and what's worse that I didn't tell you is when she gets abused his mother is there watching I was like oh my god how can you be so heartless to see a girl that screams in pain and in disgust and you do absolutely nothing but he has to come from somewhere does he and then he catches her straight away with the help of his dogs and brings her to the furnace and burns her neck and her face. So she gets burns all over and she faints. And as soon as they go back to the manor, her father that we discover had been around and he had been trying to get her back but was refused by the master, tries to stop the smith from bringing her in and tries to bring her back. But he kills him by hitting him with his head. So the smith does that and she sees her father die in front of her and then her father gets brought to the furnace and gets burned inside the furnace and then the smith crushes his bones with a hammer. I was like, oh my god, what, what more can you endure after all of that? Constant abuse, constant helplessness, there's no escape. So when she gets brought back, wants to escape, she obviously, and I would have done the same, I would have not forgiven the man of the vegetables as we call him because he didn't say anything. He didn't say how horrible they are. And so she is there because of him as well. So I wouldn't have been forgiven, but he uh. brings over some rat poison and she places it in the food and the master dies and the dogs die. And the old woman, we discover, hadn't eaten a bite, so she's still alive. Bad luck, because she chains her up in a mental asylum where she discovers she is pregnant with the baby of this awful man. And she goes through all of the pregnancy, she makes the baby come to life alone, and the baby stays with her for six days, and then is brought away right away to the old woman and she is the only one that is able to uh, take care of him take care yeah if someone like that can do that and a nurse and there is a whole thing about uh, why she had been made pregnant by this man and the sick wife sick wife because she discovers that the wife had actually been dead for a long time and her body was being preserved for them to claim that the son was hers and then she died of childbirth whereas in fact she had been died for months she couldn't give him an heir and so he killed her and then tried to get this heir with rose so 
it was so awful and it doesn't end there obviously because she has to endure everything inside the mental asylum the doctor is as bad as they are because he does nothing to protect her in any way shape or form he covers them up all of the time for whatever reason it's very much not explained and not clear which is crazy because I wanted to know like what drives this sick man to do all they want it was so crazy to me and so the story ends on a positive note when her son kills the old lady by making the horse kick her and she dies immediately and then he goes to rescue his mother and brings her away but this story is so scary because the time that goes by from when she is little to the end of the story, from when she's 14 and it all begins to the end, is so much. There are so many years in between the very start and the very end and she's old by the time she gets out of there. Her son is 14, which means, well, not old, but like she would have spent so many years chained up and prison of all of these mad people. Forgives the man of the vegetables because he's kind of a weak man and he wants to do better, etc. But he's no better than them in my mind. He's very much weak and doesn't stand up for himself out of fear probably. But that doesn't excuse her. She's still in a situation that is horrible. So absolute no for me. And so that was the awful story that I read and I wanted to discuss the reason why I think it's for me the most scary you will ever read. As I said, obviously this is a scare that doesn't end when you wake up and if you think about it, in modern times I would say it's a lot less normalized to abuse women that way, especially in the West, and women can stand up for themselves and can have protection, and we don't expect them to do everything that men want in most societies, but still, in some societies, we might think about how much people are enduring because they are being abused by men or by other people that want to be above them, and I think that this is something to bear in mind because, for example, when we are at the news and read about a story about a woman or someone that goes through something horrible, has lived a life of shit and maybe gets released or dies, we really have to think that that is not that unusual, unfortunately still and that it could happen to any one of us. There are so many stories about people that get with partners that at the beginning seem wonderful and then become weird and chain people up and expect everything from them, abuse them, is very much real and I think this is a fear that we can have even if we are privileged like me, even if we live in a privileged society, there are so many stories like that so I really think that that is a book that if you are into those kind of things is very enlightening and you should really give it a read or give it a listen because it's the only way I could read it in two days from yesterday night to today so I really think you should give it a read because it's literally the most terrifying thing you're gonna read about because if you read about a monster yeah, it's scary, but it's a monster. It's like Frankenstein. Who? Scary, but it doesn't exist. But these things do exist, and abuse is something that we hear far too often. And when you read it on the page, you are going to be so in tune with the feeling that she is feeling during that time, which is shit. A thousand percent has no other explanation so yeah this book also e opens you up to compassion I think being there in those situations is heartbreaking and I think that reading about them is not the same as living them obviously but it can really really bring you closer to them and make you aware of what you do and how to act in order to avoid anything that could go in any way shape or form close to any of that 
So yeah, I really hope that you will consider this book review an interesting one because I really thought the book was. And if you decide to give it a read, let me know what you thought about it and if it has such an impact on you. Because for me, it really did have an impact and it's I don't know. I'm really touched by it and I really think that I want to recover easily. So let me know what you think about it and if you found value in this or liked it, please give it a thumb up and we will see each other next time. Happy Halloween! Bye guys!